there everyone. Um, I'm sorry it's been such a long time since I did a tutorial. Oh goodness, I've been slammed work, I got a cold, I got sick. I've had um, medical problems where I have had uh, something going on where I had a compressed vertebra in my neck that was causing me all this pain and suffering and I went to spinal surgeons, they said oh you're gonna have to have surgery and I went to another surgeon. he says no you don't have to have surgery so I've been kind of busy with other stuff basically <laughs> but uh, the good news is I at this point I don't have to have surgery originally I was going to do it but I may have to at some point but um, for right now I'm just doing therapy on my neck to pull out the vertebra and um, alleviate the, the pain and suffering I was going through as well as nerve damage so it's going well therapy's going well and stuff and the good news is that I'm finally not quite as slammed at work, so um, hopefully I can start doing some more of these tutorials and doing some stuff. Uh, also, you know, I should probably bring up... Let's go to WHRO and see if they have... There we go. Dr. Madblood. Uh, I don't know if you've seen some of my older stuff, but... Uh, okay, Dr. Madblood is the local horror movie show host here. He's been doing uh, Dr. Madblood for 35 years now. And I've been, uh, they always have a, um, a Halloween show. It's cheesy, you know, stupid, crazy stuff where they show, uh, it's kind of like MST3K with, you know, different different funny characters that break in between the movie and make fun of it. And um, I've, I've been, uh, the last couple years, been doing like animated creatures for that. So that's happening, as you can see here, Saturday, October 29th, 10 p.m. here. If you go to WHRO, you'll be able to see it. So I had to do a little bit of work on that monster and stuff, and just everything was taking up my time. So I did not have a chance to do tutorials for quite some time, uh, so you can see why. But uh, now I'm getting back on my feet. Hopefully we'll do some more stuff. So with that being said, I'm going to be doing a bunch of tutorials in the land of 3D and, and all sorts of good stuff. And, um, you know, there'll be really great things coming up. But this right today is a Unity tutorial. And um, if we go ahead and play this game here, somebody was asking me about my game called, well, unfortunately here, you're only going to see part of the screen. I guess there's, you know, it's a free aspect. I should choose iPad wide. There we go. It's a little bit better. Things are still kind of offset. I don't know what happened there. But basically, um, I, I I think a long, long time ago, I showed you guys this game I was working on, and this is called Arena Champions. And so basically, if you, um, it's going to be sort of like a uh, arena combat game where you have teams of characters uh, that you face off against, uh, you know, teams of enemy characters, and you make uh, great use out of your special abilities in order to. Uh, to uh, defeat the enemies, which are very powerful. So, um, you know, uh, you can tap on characters and move them around and stuff. So, uh, basically, somebody was asking, I've, I've done tutorials before um, showing you different aspects of how this game was made, but somebody was asking me, uh, how did I, you know, create the selection rings? For example, when I tap on a character here, all right, when you tap on a character, the selection ring shows up under them and disappears from the other people and stuff. So actually, it's it's pretty simple to implement this. So I thought I would give you a uh, chance to look at this. So let's take a look at the character, the hero characters here. These guys right up here are some of my hero characters. And as you can see here, if we take a look at our, this guy here, the fire warrior here, his name is Flame Blade. And as you can see here, if you open up the un, you know uh, open up the prefab character here, you'll see that there's um, an armature that came from Blender. This is, you know, a Blender model, of course, uh, modeled and animated in Blender. Actually, I think the model itself was, uh, I got off of Turbo Squid, but I animated it myself. And um, then you can see that there's uh, a couple other objects that are uh, nested under here. And uh, Casting Point is an empty object, which is uh, the place where spells are going to emanate from. But uh, the thing that we're interested in in this tutorial is this thing called Select Plane. And as you can see here, all I did was I created a uh, just a plane. Go into Game Object, Create Other Plane, and you'll get like a flat plane, or you could you know import a plane from like uh, Lightwave or something like that. And then uh, I just uh, created a little 
selection kind of icon here. You can see here it's just a, a couple of rings. Uh, I saved it as a PNG file with an alpha channel. And then you can see here all I did was uh, give it, in this case, this is going out for mobile, you know, uh, iPads, iPhones. And so I just gave it the uh, shader uh, iPhone transparent. All right. And so, um, you know, just go in, in there, and, and that's, that's what gave me the kind of transparent background. Okay, so now I have an object, um, you know, that is, is uh, attached to this character. Uh, you know, it's, it's underneath the character's hierarchy here, so it'll move around wherever this character moves around to. And um, so I've created that, and I gave it a tag. Uh, I don't know, you know, if, if you are unaware with tags, basically tags are a way in Unity of, you know, referencing different types of objects. For example, all the hero characters here have a tag called player hero. All of the enemy enemies have a tag called enemy. So whenever you want to reference something, you can always loop through all the uh, game objects in your scene that have a certain tag. Okay? So I have that. Okay, so um, what I want to do was, uh, when you select on this object, it deselects uh, all the other guys, and then it selects this guy, and then it uh, just uh, sets the selection um, plane. Uh, it basically shows this shows and hides the selection plane. Uh, so what I did was, all right, let's go. I have a, a um, I have a script here called Touch Manager, which basically just manages all of the uh, you know uh, different inputs. Uh, even though it's called Touch Manager, if you look at it, I have it set to input dot mouse button. So you could play this game on a PC or Mac and whatnot. But basically, what I want you to be aware of here, I won't go into this code too much because you can see other tutorials that I've done that show you how to, um, you know, select objects and whatnot. But basically, you um, you have a uh, you detect when the mouse has been clicked. Mouse, uh, and the good thing is that input mouse. Uh, mouse button up will also detect uh, touch touches, so it only detect like like one finger touch. But basically, if you're doing a, a game or something where you're doing one finger touch to control things, uh, doing the input dot get mouse button and whatnot is is very uh, same similar to that. And then you just do this. Uh, you cast a ray from where you uh, click the mouse or touch the mouse on you know or touch on the screen, and then you just basically go through and you detect. Did we touch uh, something with a tag called floor? If that's the case, do certain things. Uh, then the other thing is we do is we go and we get a list of all of the player hero characters in the game. Find game objects with tag player hero. And then we just go through and we loop through each one and we determine what to do with it. Okay. So um, you can see here, this is the code actually that selects or deselects objects. All right. So let's go through that. So as you can see here, uh, once we've got our hit.transform.tag, all right, so if the hit hit is is the, you know, the ray that was cast from where you touched or clicked the mouse, if the if the tag uh, of the object that was clicked is called player hero, this is what you do. Okay, the first thing I'm doing is I'm deselecting every player hero. I just loop through there and I have this script here that has a variable called selected. I just set that to false for everybody by default. And then I go ahead and I only select, I only set the player hero variable dot selected to true for the one that was hit. So you can see that in these two lines of code here, you get the, um, the player hero variable script only for the game object that was clicked on, which is hit.transform.gameObject, uh, get component, and then you just select that, uh, you set that variable to true, okay? But this part here will vary, vary based on, you know, whatever kind of uh, game scenario you're doing. The actual code that shows and hides the selection plane that I showed you here is actually done under the hero script, okay? So in the uh, update function here, I have these two lines of code, so this is as as easy as it gets here. So um, what we did was in inside the player hero variable script, all right. 
this is a script I created to pull all of the different variables that this is going to uh, be relevant for this character. I've got his hit points, his mana, his health bar, all that kind of stuff, his skills, everything like that, uh, his speed and everything. And also whether he's selected or not, and I created a, um, where is it at here? Selected plane. Okay, I created a reference to the plane object that is attached to each character. All right. And so then, in order to show and hide that selection plane, it's very simple. This is it. You just say, okay, uh, you know, or, or you could reference whatever object in your scene. But basically, if you want to show and hide an object, you reference the object and you say dot renderer dot enabled equals true to turn it on and renderer uh, game objects renderer dot enabled equals false to turn objects off. All right, so that's as simple as that. So in the up update function, as soon as the player hero variables uh, selected function or selected variable is set to true, uh, it will enable the renderer. And if it is set to false, it will disable the renderer. And uh, that's pretty much it. So that's one way of showing and hiding objects in your scene, but also that's a way of implementing, uh, that's the way I implemented, at least in this game, how to select um, different objects. Of course, if you were doing like more of an RTS type of game where you had multiple objects being selected at once, you would just do a, a, a different type of check, find out if they're in a bounding box radius, for example, let's say you're dragging out a box, a selection box, then you would say everybody who's inside of this box, uh, set their um, selected variable to true, and then you would just go back and, and you, you would basically do this exact same thing. You know, you would set the renderer for whatever kind of uh, icon or whatever uh, to true or false based on your selection. So, um, I hope that helps all of you game programmer, programmers out there. And like I said, I got more stuff coming. Um, so I hope that